In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the recent 2023.8 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Update 2023.8 has just been released and this month we do have a smaller update, but despite it being a smaller update, we've still had a whole bunch of new contributors, over a thousand pull requests and much, much more. So let's kick this off with our first new feature. And with the first new feature, we have a brand new entity known as the event entity. If you've done any kind of work with events in Home Assistant, then you'll know that they can be quite cumbersome and time consuming. The majority of your time is spent figuring out what the different events are called, what data they're expecting, and also what events can actually be triggered by a device. Well, all of that is now going to be a thing of the past. Integrations can now start implementing this brand new event entity, and this simplifies and solves all of our problems as it actually captures the event data for you and shows it as a normal entity. So just like normal entities, they'll actually show up in your control panel and the other niceties that you get from these event entities are the fact that you can just call them and reference them within automations and scripts and they also show up in your logbooks. With the initial rollout of 2023.8, Matter, HomeKit devices, MQTT and Philips Hue devices all support this straight out of the box so you'll start to see these event entities within those integrations and over time I imagine lots of others are going to start to use it. One way that I can see this being really useful is other integrations actually updating their entities so that the entities actually make sense. So things like doorbells will no longer just show up as input booleans and there'll actually be an event that has some nice event things related to it. Carrying on then with my next feature and we've got some new enhancements for assist. Last month, Assist had a bunch of new features and changes as part of the Year of the Voice Chapter 3, and this kind of follows on from that with some new enhancements. The first one is the ability to actually add items to your shopping list using your voice. So now, if you've got Assist set up, you can actually use Assist to either type out or say something that you want to add to your shopping list. So you can say things like, add bananas to my shopping list, and as you'd expect, they'll add to your shopping list. Add bananas to my shopping list. If you didn't know, the shopping list is a built-in feature of Home Assistant where you can view this nice dashboard to actually add and track any things that you want in your shopping list. As of right now, Assist can only add one item at a time, meaning you have to say each item individually. If you try and chain a bunch of items together, like add beans, cheese, crisps and dog biscuits, then those things will all add as one giant sentence, which is probably not what you want. The other thing you can't do as of right now is actually remove an item, so if you add something, you can't use your voice to actually remove it. Those additional features are probably going to come as this feature enhances and evolves a bit more, but as of right now, you can just add items. The next enhancement for Assist is actually quite a big feature, but it's the ability to make use of wildcards within your sentence triggers. So now when you're setting up and creating your different sentence triggers, you can actually supply wildcards and whenever you say or type out a phrase that matches one of these values in your sentence trigger, there'll be a partial match and this partial match will actually trigger an action. This matching allows parts of the sentence to be supplemented and this is actually how the shopping list works. Another really good example of actually using this is by setting up a sentence trigger that will play a set album by a set artist and you can do this by either typing this out or saying it as a sentence using your voice. I'm interested to see what the community do with automations using these different wildcards and if you've got a really good example of something you're going to do with your voice and these wildcards then let me know what it is in the comments below. Up next we've got a brand new feature that uses everybody's favourite buzzword, AI image generation. In last month's release we had a big change to the way that service calls worked and they added the ability for service calls to actually respond with data. In this release, we have a brand new service that's been added that capitalizes on this data response. And now we can actually make a service call to OpenAI's DALI, and we can have this actually return an image as data. If you've never seen or heard of DALI, it's OpenAI's AI image generation tool, and it allows you to generate a bunch of different images based on some text that you supply. Using the new Home Assistant service call, we can do the same thing where we can actually supply some text and it will generate us an image and return it back to us using the new service call. One really cool example and a practical use case that I can actually see being used on different wall panels and dashboards is the example that Home Assistant showed off where you could use the AI image generation to generate an image of the city or the locale that you're in based on whatever the current weather is. 
And if you really wanted to, you could take it a step further and you could actually combine the image generation service call with wildcards and you could use your voice then to actually generate an image. JLo actually had a really cool example that he showed off where he used his voice to generate an image of a dog and a hot dog and have that displayed onto the TV. So if that's something you want to do, you can do that. Before you spend a bunch of time setting up the OpenAI conversation agent and all of the other little bits that you'll need, it is worth noting that this is a paid service. So to actually make the service calls, you will need credit on your OpenAI account or a paid subscription to the Dolly service. Moving on to my penultimate feature, and we've got some new changes to the Unify integration. If you're a Unify user and you make use of Unify within your Home Assistant setup, then I think these new features are definitely gonna be ones that you probably will use. The first change is the ability to make use of the new image entity that was again added in a previous update. So now we can use the new image entities to actually display and visualize a QR code that contains the set SSID and the password for a network. This might be really useful if you want to display the QR code on a wall panel or a dashboard and just have that as something that a member of your house or a guest or somebody else can use to connect to your network. The other really nice change is one that I personally really like and it's the ability to turn on and off set networks. This one's really useful if you make use of a separate network for your guests, so you've got a guest Wi-Fi. You could combine this to your existing guest automation, so when your house has guest mode turned on, it automatically also turns on the guest Wi-Fi, and when you turn it off, it again automatically turns that off. Wrapping this up then with our fifth and final feature, we've got another integration change, and this time it's a small change to the Xiaomi BLE integration. If you happen to be a Xiaomi user and you make use of the MyScale 1 or MyScale 2, then you'll be happy to know that this device will now automatically be detected using the Bluetooth auto discovery. So if you have this device, you can now bring it straight into Home Assistant without the need for any additional hardware like small proxies or any kind of weird and wonderful add-ons and bits of code. It'll just work. It just works! And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five new features that I really like. If there's a new feature that you'd like to know a little bit more about, then let me know what it is in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes, my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links for all of those places in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.